Hey, greetings YouTube, performance reviews where I give you the review from the technician's point of view. And if you're new to the channel, I'm gonna give you a review from a technician's point of view and not some paid shill influencer stay at home, something like that. No, we're actually gonna get into the nitty and gritty of this machine. But it appears to be made by whatever Chinese company makes most of Shark's products. This is an interesting machine because they took a bagless design that was meant to be disposable and then put a bag in it, but still kept all the things that were not good about most of the other vacuums in this category. And this is a very strange value proposition because some of these machines uh, can be had as cheap as $100. Some of them are a little over $200. So I think if it's closer to the $100 range, that's a better value proposition and makes more sense in terms of what we're seeing here in terms of the lack of quality. Once you go over that $200 mark, the quality or lack thereof in this case, is atrocious and completely unacceptable. And let me elaborate with that. I'm not trying to be super negative here, but this machine does have to compete in the U.S. market where there are plenty of other options uh, that I would really urge you to look at as well if you're seriously considering one of these. But I also think for the right sort of situation, somebody who has a real big mixture between hard floor and... Uh, medium to short pile carpet, there might be a reason you'd buy this. Let's see if the babies do yet. <gasps> There's a beautiful baby whale inside it. <laughs> let's get serious, let's talk about bag changes. Now let's get to the reason you'd buy this over the other machines of this style, which is that it has a bag. Um, and if you've never had a bagged vacuum, the purpose of the bag is to trap the dust and it allows a lot more airflow than a bagless machine. Now another thing I do want to just mention is these synthetic bags really don't lose any power as they get full. Very, very little, about 10%. So don't think that there are anything like these old paper bags that we knew when I was growing up. These are not a thing, they haven't been a thing. Don't even compare these to this sort of bag to be fair to the Kenmore. It also costs less to run. And there's a couple reasons that bagged machines cost less to run than bagless. It sounds counterintuitive, but hear me out. With a bagless machine, you have a cyclone that needs to be rinsed out, washed out, and dumped every time. Plus, then you have filters that need to be replaced far more often than if you have a bagged machine. And most of the bagless machines have washable filters that need to be replaced every three to six months, along with the HEPA filter that needs to be replaced every one, three to six months, depending on the machine. So having a bag really prolongs that. It also makes it a lot easier on the motor, allowing that extra airflow, which means it could potentially last longer than the same machine in a bagless variant. So less machines in a landfill. Now traditionally with modern bagged vacuums, a bag is made out of recycled plastic that's been spawn, spun and woven. With this machine being kind of mislabeled out of the unknowns of overseas, I can't tell you if it's made out of recycled material or not, or even if this is a HEPA material like other bags. What I can tell you is they have a dust bag release similar to other com uh, machines, which you see there's a dust bag release. I'm gonna press the dust bag release button. And there you go, it does the thing. Um, and what that does is it's just a, my spring is really, this is, this is really chintzy in terms of how this works. It just springs it up and releases the bag. When I said from the technician's point of view, I have a few vacuum bags laying around my house. I've got some of the common ones. So a Mila GN bag is slightly wider, and I'll explain that why, but there's one that's common. We have a pneumatic Henry bag. You can see that's much larger. We can see a Oryx CC bag. That's also a very common one. Again, these are all vacuums that are made currently. And then I've got a Hoover Type Y bag. And this is probably the most relevant one because this is a bag that is about the same size, or I guess the same price, but it's a little bit different. So with vacuum bags, they all work a little bit differently. Uh, but generally you can fill them up like a pillow in a canister. In an upright, the top part of the bag here and we can see, I think the auric fill line is the easiest to see. But you see there's a fill line about halfway up there. So if we were to put a fill line on this, it would be printed right here. So this is about as full as it's gonna get. 
Again, because the bag compartment's so small because they converted a bagless machine to a bagged machine. But I guess my, my major point that I want to make is that the Hoover Y bag is a bag from a competing company, competing price machine, and it is a larger bag. This will hold more. Also, you know, some of these bags are gray up here. The gray bags you see are what are called odor fighting bags. I mean, the bag has active charcoal that's woven into it to fight odors. I don't personally have an odor problem in my house, but some people who have pets that don't get groomed often or are particularly oily or whatever, this can help, or if you have a smoker or something in the house. Again, so the bag size on this really can't compete uh, with the competition, and it doesn't seal up. That, that's, I guess, my other negative is all these, even this cardboard orc bag, which are really cheap bags. These bags are inexpensive as can be. Uh, they don't seal up. It, the bag technology is more reminiscent of, of this Kirby bag that was designed 25 years ago. Uh, so it's, it's nothing new, and they, they claim they have a patent on the bag. I'm not sure how they could have the patent on the bag uh, looking at this, this mechanism. There's nothing special about this mechanism. Is If we look at the bag docks on this Hoover Y bag, same sort of thing where you press the button, you release it, and the bag falls off. I'm not sure how they could have a patent on what's basically a copy of a 10-year-old design. Now, those of us who are astute will have noticed that there is a filter in the bag chamber. And let's see how that changes. Very simple. And it's foam. And the purpose of this filter is in case the bag breaks or debris falls down into the bag chamber. So that's something that really is just there to protect the motor, presumably. And it's hinged up, but the hinges are so cheap and the plastic is so, um, yeah, whatever on this, that when you go to pull it up, the whole thing comes off. Now underneath this chrome cover, which is again very cheap plastic, uh, questionable choices of materials there, we have a exhaust filter, which does have a gasket around it, which is a good thing. And I would presume this needs to be changed on a regular basis. It's hard to say, it's really small, it's not very dense. Uh, I would be surprised if this filter lasts six months to a year on this particular machine. Now we're going to do the performance reviews pickup test, which is breakfast cereal, cat litter, flour, and fresh pet hair. And if you're not familiar with this pickup test, we also use the studio microphone, so you're going to hear the real sound of the machine. Headphones warning, it's kind of a screamer. <laughs> see any snow plowing that was kind of cool you can see how narrow the cleaning path is from this it's a lot more narrow than most vacuum cleaners oh there we go i have all right we have a piece of cat litter here not a huge deal um, yeah you can see that the flower was left kind of deep in the carpet oh animal hair was all right Actually, I dragged a piece kind of out of frame here, but that, that pickup test was excellent, especially in this price category. And I think that's one of the positives of this machine is it does appear to clean pretty well. It doesn't clean as well as it should. Again, the flower test is evident of that. Um, but it cleans pretty well, and I wouldn't find this acceptable at the maximum range this is sold at. But when this goes on sale at half price, this is acceptable, and if you have an apartment or something like that, uh, you're not going to be too concerned about making your carpet last. And I think that's one of the, the things with this cleaner is this machine with this narrow path is not at all designed for a house. This is designed for an apartment or a small condo, not a normal full-size house. We're going to do that same test with the breakfast cereal, cat litter, flour, and pet hair on hard floor. This machine does appear to be exhausted frontwards, so I am worried it's going to blow the pet hair away. We'll see if that happens. And of course, we'll do this with the roller off. A little bit of flour. 
It didn't blow the pet hair away from the machine, despite having this big vent here, which does appear to be fully pointed up, so that's a good thing. Um, oh. Apparently it snow plowed or dragged two pieces of larger debris, and as you can see, it left a little flower. Pet hair, cat litter, it did fine. So these are, again, excellent results in this price range for hard floor pickup but definitely not as good as some of the other vacuums I've seen here on the channel. Well, let's see what working vacuum is on this. It sets off the full bag check indicator. Oh. The machine has like this, I don't know what they put in the plastic of this machine, but it can't be good for you. It's got a horrible smell to it. Cord length on the machine was slightly better than some of the other vacuums in this price point. Uh, you have about 25 feet of cord. It is not quite 30 feet um, until you take the holder off, which in that case, then you're gonna run over the cord and then you could maybe get a little farther. But most people are gonna keep the cord on its holder. We're gonna talk about the lift away feature of this machine and stair cleaning a little bit here. So you're not meant to use it in its upright position on stairs. What you're meant to do is pull the hand tools off and use that like on stairs. And then this machine is small enough it would balance on a lot of stairs. Not all stairs, but it would balance. It is hefty though for its size. I wouldn't want to be carrying this up and down stairs. It's heftier than you would think. Now here's where the complication comes with the lift off section of the machine is the electrical cord is clipped to the wand rather than down here or just left free flowing. So you have to unclip the electrical cord before you can take the wand off if you want to use that. Or if you want to use the lift off function and leave the power head completely behind. Okay, now you have a machine. Now we've shed some weight and we press the wand, which is a different button. And now we have a machine. Okay, that's fine but the hose is so short and the slinky is so much that when you give it any sort of tug, the machine's gonna tip over and move around like so, which means it potentially would fall off the stairs. And that leads to something very awkward in that you now have a machine that separates for really no apparent reason because you can't use the wand with the electric nozzle. So you can only use the wand with certain tools so now you're left holding the machine. Why do I want a machine I hold in two hands? I don't see a purpose in this. And this is the equivalent of taking this off the floor and then putting it on the wand and making the machine basically do this or want to do this while you're vacuuming. Uh, it seems to be the answer to the questions nobody asked with a small nozzle that can't be used once you detach the main motor unit. Um, it, it really, seems to me to not really serve a purpose other than marketing. I would much rather have a canister vacuum with the nozzle already attached, ready to do wherever, where I can detach with my feet. I don't have to worry about hitting any special levers or having anything catch on anything. Uh, canister vacuums are just easier and make a lot more sense at the end of the day. Well, I just noticed this upon the separation of that. I think this is the first machine I've actually had animal hair that's like stuck around the roller. Is there a blockage in here? I'm not sure why that is. Well, I checked the machine for a blockage. There certainly isn't any and there's a lot of airflow. So I guess the roller just tangles. That's uh, really the first vacuum I've had tangle with pet hair. Usually it's my wife's long hair that gets stuck in there. Now, depending on your variant, it may have come with one, two, or maybe more upholstery tools or turbo tools. Mine came with two different ones. It came with a very large traditional style upholstery tool and a small little turbo tool. Now I found when using this uh, tool because it doesn't lock in place and it's not tapered uh, in the right places. It should be tapered all the way, not just at the beginning here. I found that this does come off a lot during use. <laughs>
don't know how much of that I captured on camera, but you can see when it's on, it makes it even more bouncy because the base is very small. My number one con with this machine is gonna be that the hose is short and it's this really stiff slinky hose. That'd be my number one thing about this is the after, the tools are really an afterthought on this machine. Now in my unboxing video, I commented on this, but basically the tools don't lock into place and where they are on the unit, they get bumped off so easily. There was really no thought placement to these tools. I wish the, if they had just put these same brackets up here, they would bump into a far less stuff, but really there's no way that any of this stuff uh, is gonna stay put. Again, this machine is not a canister despite being sold as a lift away machine. Uh, so getting under things, it's a mixed bag. If what you're getting under is only, you know, this length of the unit, that's fine. But getting under something like a bed, it's not going to do that again. I don't expect that in this price range. I don't expect this from an upright. Now the Kenmore name for some of the older folks is going to bring up warm memories of inexpensive, fairly decent quality. Not the best quality, but fairly decent quality. You got what you paid for in the past. Unfortunately, the machines that were either made by Panasonic and later Creva are no more. They're, they're just not. This machine here is not of the quality or the standard of the machine. I think one of my viewers put it best in the unboxing video. This is the final nail in the coffin for Kenmore. It's just a name and it's always been just a name. It's always been just a rebranding of products. And if you had one of these uprights or one of these style canisters and you pick one of these up, you're going to be disappointed. The only advantage it has is it's about two pounds lighter than the upright. It's about the same weight as this big old canister next to it. Uh, so it is dense. Again, even though you might see the Kenmore name and get those warm fuzzy butterflies in your stomach, it's really not the same, unfortunately. So my final thoughts about the Kenmore, the type of shark lift away system in general. It's been done better in the past by Bissell. It's been done better in the past by SIBO. I just don't see a reason to buy this over a traditional canister vacuum. I do, however, see this when it goes on sale for $99 and such. I do see this as a bargain proposition to somebody who has a mixture of hard floors and carpet, like a true mixture, and are switching between it constantly. If you have higher pile carpet, it does struggle. And if you have all hard floors, again, you can get a canister for the price of this thing. I don't see any reason to deal with the extra bulk and weirdness of the design. So that's that's my thoughts on this, is if the price is right and the situation's right. But for me, in my house, it doesn't make any sense. In any apartment I have, it doesn't make any sense to me. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you really like this video, consider checking out our Patreon, where we have exclusive content for our Patreon supporters. If you have questions, comments about this machine, leave them below. If you just need to reach me, I'm available. My email, all that stuff is uh, description below and have yourself a wonderful day.